Hi everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. Listen, I've got a really cool critique that I want to share with you. Uh, what I've been noticing a lot in the member critique gallery is sometimes people will upload an image and it looks really good, but it would look even better if they just spent a little bit more time on their drawings. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we have a pretty awesome drawing here to the right uh, from David. David is a member of our website and his reference is over here to the left and he started this drawing in pencil and finished it in pen but I just feel as though David left a lot on the table in terms of mood and depth. Now how could David add a little bit more mood to this piece while at the same time creating more depth? Well it's pretty simple it's it's all about putting more pencil down on the paper and in this particular case what David could have done was just, I, I'm working with a brush that's at about 30% uh, opacity, just adding a little bit more shadow over here and thinking of this area more as an entirety of front plane, an entire front plane I should say. Thinking of that as a little bit darker, okay, and then even this area over here being much darker with this area because uh, the shawl, the fabric, however you want to say it, is casting a shadow on most of the front plane of this statue. And that would create lots more depth and lots more mood. Now, of course, there's a lot of different surface planes going on within this statue, but those are the two very, very simple areas that if David pushed a little bit more with the pen, because uh, he started it in pencil and, and finished it in pen. If he pushed a little bit more with the pen, this piece would just have so much more mood. Now, what exactly am I looking at when, when, I, when I think of, of the tone like that? Well, you know what? Let me um, work on layer number one. I'm going to get uh, a pure white. Let me go to 100% opacity. Let me get a smaller brush. Basically, what I'm thinking about is surface planes. So there would be this surface plane, uh, that would be our top plane, and then that would be our front plane. And most of the light is hitting the top of this statue's legs, and most of the front of the lower legs is in shadow. So it's just trying to block in that big tone. Now we can think of the same thing also with the head. So the head is totally a box, just like the legs make up a box. and there's our front plane of the box, pretty cool. And the top of that box is catching light once again. And the front of the head is catching shadow. Now, this aspect, the shawl, is casting shadow on the tops of the shoulders because normally if the top of the head is catching light, well then the tops of the shoulders would be catching light as well. So I just want to share this with you. Now of course there's a gazillion surface planes on this statue. We can keep adding different surface planes. That one would tilt. Uh, we have a little tilt over here. But you just kind of want to go for the big uh, top plane, front plane, when you're thinking about trying to create a little bit more mood within your piece. Even the hands have another uh, set of, of surface planes. If I can work on the statue right now, so that would be a little bit more of a front plane. And then that those two little fingers there would be, uh, that would be our front plane actually, and that would be our top plane. So again, you're, you're thinking about light and shade. So if I kind of come full circle here with you guys, if you work on a drawing and you step away from it and you're like, God, it, it, it could just have a little bit more pop to it. What could create a little bit more of that pop is basically you just spending a little bit more time uh, putting more pencil down on the paper. Now, if you're working with pencil, and you have a hard time making solid tones, maybe what you want to do is you want to try to work with toned paper. Uh, maybe a middle tone toned paper and you use some white charcoal pencil. Maybe if you're working with pencil and you're having a hard time making these solid dark tones, which a lot of people have a hard time with it, you could use a Bristol brush to kind of blend your pencil into the texture of the paper. There's really a lot of cool techniques that you can use. Now, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about a background tone. 
this piece could be even more moody and have more depth if there was a little bit of a background tone involved with this piece. So I can come on in here and just think about um, the bottom of the statue casting a shadow on the ground. Uh, that would add more depth, more mood. I can put in a little bit of a tone in the background over here at the base of the statue. And what that would do in turn is just create uh, more of a triangular type composition. I think that would be pretty cool as well. Another option to pop the head is I can just come on in here with a little bit of a gradation from top to bottom. And this could kind of gradate down uh, that away and that would really pop the head. Of course, I'm being a little sloppy here for the sake of time, but if, if you add some background tone, what it does is it gives you an opportunity to blend the statue into something which in turn creates even more depth and more atmosphere. Listen, I don't want to go too long on this. I really want to thank you so much uh, for watching this critique. If you are looking for a video critique of your work, definitely come on over to drawingtutorialsonline.com. Have a peek of, at what we have to offer. Uh, we just finished a brand new gesture drawing course, which I'm really super excited about. I love gesture drawing. And this is a really informative course. A lot of the members said that they liked it. It has 10 parts to it. And uh, this one over here, Advanced Opposite Seas. I, I talk about Opposite Seas all the time with gesture drawing, but this one is Advanced Opposite Seas. And every single one of these lessons has uh, a downloadable PDF that, that you can download and, and look at. And in this particular PDF, we talk about attachment points anatomical attachment points for your gesture drawings and uh, it's, it's really cool you, you, you can download this you can read it and, and you can follow along with the screencast tutorial as well so listen that's all I've got for you today thanks so much for uh, listening to this uh, drawing tip and I'll talk to you soon <laughs>